I'm Keith. I'm Van with Beck Art. And today we want to talk about high fence installation. We get a lot of questions off of the website and Van, it ranges of people that are asking us questions from the do-it-yourself guy that's fencing his garden to contractors that are fencing production deer facilities and then solar security guys. And it's the same across the board. Today, we're gonna to be installing on pipe, but it doesn't matter whether you build a pipe brace, a wood brace, the installation practices are basically the same. They are, once you get your brace, and the brace is very important. We've got really good braces here, Keith, so that uh, we've got a good foundation to this fence. So once you've got a good brace, you can go to fencing.beckart.com and watch bracing uh, videos and get our bracing specs if you need to. But once you get a good brace, then you're capable of pulling wire and this fence will last for a long time. And we do have the privilege today of using the unwinder from Keystone Fence. And it's a great machine. It is, and you know, you'd call it an unwinder, but really this is a wire dispenser. It's capable of uh, tensioning wire, uh, unrolling, a really versatile machine, easy to use, swap back and forth either side of the machine. So it really is. nice. We're, we're really fortunate to have it out here with us today. And there's nothing special. We're hooked up to a fairly small machine and it handles it pretty well. But you don't always have to have as much equipment as we have. You could very easily roll this out on the ground, put a stretcher bar on the other side and pull it. And we're gonna show both practices today. Yes. All right, well, we'll get started here on this end. We'll use our T-quips and get terminated and get going. All right. Okay, we have our wire pulled through the dispenser and up here against our king post. But like I said, Van, you can do this the old way. You can roll it out on the ground. You can pull with a stretcher bar down at the end. All you have to do is roll out and then hang this fence up on your queen post where you can actually work. And this is not falling over, trying to get on top of you. So the first thing we've got to do, all of the Beckhart Fixed Knot products have gripples on the end. So we've got to get those gripples off. So you can do it one of two ways. There's a small key that is attached to the line wires. You just simply take that key off, push it through the release hole, and then pop those gripples off. But hang on to those gripples because we may use them if we're putting two rolls together. That's right, Keith. And that's one of the things I really like about the Solalot Pro is it does come with the gripples. It makes joining rolls of wire together really easy. My favorite way though, Van, to get them off is just simply cut them. A lot of times these ends will get a little bit bent and sometimes they're hard to go through the T-clip. They're hard to use to tie knots. So you can just simply get right against the, the stay wire and just cut them. And then we'll just save that piece of wire, strip them off later and use them where we need them. And guys, Van and I are working together here, and it's very, very important that you protect your eyes. These wires are sharp. You've got two guys pushing and pulling on this. Please, please wear your safety glasses because Van, this could turn ugly really, really quick. Yes, it can. And um, especially with tall fence like this, it's gonna try to roll down at times. Exactly. So the guy on the bottom has to be really careful. So now, being that we're installing on pipe, we know that we just have to strip away one knot. So we're gonna strip away one knot here and get ready to terminate these ends. And for those of you watching, we have a video on how to strip these knots away, but we simply cut the stay wire between the knot and then just bend the knot backwards from the direction that the machine put it on and then just simply slide it off. So we have the knots stripped off, man, and the way we've got this brace set up is we're gonna tie our first top rail between the second and third, and then this middle rail is going to hit somewhere in the middle of the fence, and it's hitting right on the opening. And you can check these brace specs out at fencing.beckart.com, and just click on solid lock brace specs and all of these profiles on how to build these braces are right there. So we'll get this terminated and we're gonna use the T-clips from Gripple today and it makes terminating very, very easy. 
It does, and working with this uh, high fence where we got 15 line wires on this one, some of them's up to 23. It will cut out 30 to 45 minutes per termination. So, not huge only that, time savings. Much easier on your hands. Absolutely. So, I want to take a quick minute to talk to you guys just a second. Um, where you start right now is going to determine what kind of finish you get on your fence. And it's very, very important to keep this fence square when you're terminating. If you start off slack or if you start off pulled one way or the other, you're going to have slack fence when you get to the end. So very important to keep this straight as you go. And it's exaggerated by high fence band. It really is. It is. And uh, that's important, Keith. And then also on your T-clip gripples, pull them back around, make sure you're up against your post tight. Right. It's really important too when you're starting this fence out. That gives you good pull on both ears. Right. And will set you up for long-term success. And the further you get in length, the more a mistake can be exaggerated for sure. So it's important, start off square. And right now we are using this stay wire to guide us up this post. We know this post is plumb. So as we move this stay good and flat and straight, we know we've started off with a good square fence. And uh, this is one thing about high fence, man. You gotta have a ladder. You and I are pretty tall guys, but uh, we just can't seem to get there. No, it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> Makes the end of the day better if you got <laughs> That's a ladder. Right. You ain't on your tippy toes all day. Got that one, didn't you? Yeah. Now, at this point, we'll look back, make sure our stays are running straight up our post and that we've got all the slack out. And uh, we will be ready to go to make this pull. So, van one. One way that I finish out these ends, and I really like it because you can go in and you can just cut these square, but sometimes it leaves a little point sticking out. So what I usually do is I just take my pliers and I bend it under like that, and then I can reach under and I can clip that wire off. Now you've got a nice smooth termination. These T-clips these are great. Yes, they are. Okay, Keith, so we've got our wire dispense rolled out here. We did use the Keystone this uh, wire dispenser to pre-tension this. We did. We've got our bar in so we can make our final adjustments. Right. And uh, Van, we are a little bit spoiled. We get, to, uh, we get to try all the new stuff, right? We've got all the new tools. People need to realize that they don't have to have the dispenser, um, but you do have to have a tall bar and these are a little hard to come by, but uh, give us a holler at fencing.beckart.com and we can definitely help you get it. You could have very easily rolled this out on the ground, put your bar and everything in and been ready to go. And like you said, we've got the bar set, but we haven't set the wires. So we've got we've to set the wedges, tighten down on the wires, and then we're ready to pull, put the final pull on this fence. All right, we'll go ahead and drive these in. And if you notice, we've got every single line wire caught, Keith, and we do that because if you leave one, you'll have a slack wire somewhere on this fence. That's right. So we've got to get every wire caught, uh, wedges drove in good and tight, and then we can tension this fence. And right now, our bar is setting at a little bit of an angle, but we are in the vertical spacing, yeah. and that's where you want it. We're going to put the final pull on this fence, and it's going to square up just fine. But you always want to tension the bottom of high fence before you tension the top of high fence. And it's simply because you have more resistance below center than you do above center. And we've got two pullers on here where we can control this fence and make this pull nice and square. But if you pulled the top all the way over, you may not have enough to be able to get the bottom tight. So always tighten the bottom first, more resistance, and then move up to the top. Okay. All right, let's get that done. If you'll seat these wedges, I'll move over and I'll put the, uh, the puller on the bottom. Okay, sounds good. One thing to remember, Van, when you're using these pullers is always make sure that the chain's not twisted. Be sure the links are straight when you drop them into your chain walker. That way, 
Once you come under tension, you don't have a lot of problems getting that chain to catch that next link. And speaking of that, Keith, you always want to pull that bar too, not push it. Because if you've got your weight on it pushing, if it were to slip or not catch that chain, it'll come back with a lot of force. That's right. That's right. And uh, we, uh, we already have a lot of tension on the bottom. The machine took out all the slack, so it makes this a whole lot easier for sure. But uh, I'm going to grab one more link. And like you said, I'm going to pull instead of push. Pretty tight. Yep. All right, I'm gonna grab the ladder and move back over and catch this one. So we're set up, we're ready to pull van. And we know that this pipe is straight. Yep. So what we're gonna do is pull this top over and get it tight and get all of our verticals nice and straight. Now I'm gonna kind of count on you yeah. to tell me when I get there. And like Van said, we never wanna push this. So I'm gonna take the time and I'm gonna move back and forth to be sure that I'm being safe. Because if I tried to push this van and it came back, it could break my forearm, it could break a finger, anything like that. So really use a lot of common sense and, and safety practices when doing high fence any fence how are we starting to look uh pretty good probably one more Maybe one more yep. feels like we need a little bit more but yep. let me scoot my bottom in too okay there you go oh, give me a yeah we're pretty even pretty so straight feel like we need one more we'll go okay let me check this bottom top and bottom because you will develop slack along the bottom as you tension that top. You just slowly work it down. Yes. And I can feel that I need just a little bit yep. more. Okay, catch one more on the top. That's starting to feel pretty good. I'm having to get after it. And with this high tensile Beckhardt fence, you can see the fence standing up behind us. Yep. So when it starts standing up, you know that you're pretty close. So I think that will be a great tension to finish with, Van. So we always lose about one link when we terminate. You're gonna have just a little bit of slack in here. So what I'm gonna do is reach down and get another one. And then I'll know when I drop it, will be about this, this tension. How are we looking? Good, I need to get one here. To, yep. Okay. Pretty close. And we're still, it's pulling up. It's yep. not stretching, it's standing. That's the beauty of high tensile. Beauty of high it tensile. Is. You can see we've got good yep. tension coming up. All right, guys. One thing you never want to do, Van, is you want to never want to cut a fence short. Yeah. I mean, ask us how we know, right? I Everybody's cut, done it. <laughs> I cut one three times and it was still too short. There you so. go. So what we're going to do is we know we're coming around two and seven eighths pipe. Yep. We've got a full foot right here, and that should be perfect to, to pull around and get that fence. Okay, again, we've got it all stripped off, and we're gonna use the T-clips to terminate. And man, those T-clips also make it really nice because we can get just about all of this slack out. Yep. Truthfully, Van, we could sit here and we could tie knots for a half an hour on this 15 wire, or we can use these T-clips to make it a whole lot easier on ourselves. Okay, Keith, so we've got this fence tensioned up. We terminated using the Gripple T-clips. So we're ready to release back off of our uh, stretcher bar here. And uh, once we do that, we'll take our wedges out and then we'll finish trimming this fence out by tying it up to our T-posts or pipe posts and all. And man, this, so. this is where high tensile wire really shines because we have just a little bit of slack here. This fence will absorb that slack when we release this. It didn't stretch out. So you just simply drop that back in. Now everything's good and tight. Now catch the bottom. Same thing. Just 
absorb the slack. Now we can take these out. That's the great thing with this high tensile fence, Keith. Once it's the tension, if we get snow load on these fences, they take impacts, they do not stretch. And they've got a lot of elasticity. So if, that, if ice does pull them down, you knock the ice off or it melts off, they'll come right back up to tension. That's right. Just like when they were new. Now we can take this bar out and we're ready to go. When it comes time to trim this out, Ben, the little tip that we always give people is always secure the high points and then pull down into the lows. That keeps your tension, makes your fence roll really good. Here today, we're lucky. We've got a good straight pull, kind of designed it that way, but, uh, but we'll go down now and we'll show you guys how to use the pipe post clips. So Beckhart makes a bezinol pipe post clip for trimming this fence out on pipe. And the way they work, is they're formed to the pipe. We offer a custom drill chuck that just goes in your cordless drill. You just come across the line wire, back over itself, and then I always twist off right on the inside curve of the pipe. That way there's nothing sticking out to hit animals or people or anything like that. But you just come along, secure your line wires, about every other line wire all the way down, and we've got this job finished up. So to uh, tie off to our T-post on this fence, we're gonna use the Beckart T-post clips. They come with Beckart's Besnol coating, and uh, to use these, simply wrap around your wire, your fence, pinch it together behind, use the Beckart uh, drill chuck, slide on, and that'll bend it, uh, that'll twist off, cut your tails off and leave the tail sticking out right against your fence where it's nice and flush. You don't have to worry about anything getting into it. So this pretty much wraps up this project. Um, high fence is nothing really to be afraid of, Van. You just need a little different tools and you should be good to go. You know, it really is the same as a four foot fence or something you're uh, used to putting up. Oh, absolutely. You just gotta have longer tools. So. Yeah, the principles are the same. Principles yep. are the same. So when it comes time to purchase your fencing products, remember, Beckart, made in the USA. And you can check these products out and all our products at fencing.beckart.com. Thanks for watching.